I'm going to spoil this movie because I'm going to talk about all of it. If you haven't seen this movie yet and don't want to be spoiled, turn down the volume. I need the views. Ordinarily, with the sequel, I talk about the previous entry, how it did well, how it resonated with audiences, and how it made enough money to greenlight a sequel. Cloverfield did all of these. But this is not a Cloverfield sequel. As J.J. Abrams puts it, it's a blood relative. Get the f*** out of here with that b It's a standalone story trading on that name alone. Someone had to say it. This is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is Michelle, who's leaving town in a big hurry. Well, looks like somebody's single now. She's running away from Ben, her fiancé, after they had a big fight, played by the voice of Bradley Cooper. Are you some saint all of a sudden? What has the galaxy ever done for you? Why isn't important right now. While she drives away, someone rams her off the road. <laughs> she wakes up in a room with an IV in her arm, a brace on her leg, and she's chained to a wall. She's locked in this dank, dark, bare basement on a bare mattress. You know, three-star Airbnb. She grabs her phone, but of course, no bars. And Howard comes in. It's played by John Goodman. He gives her food, crutches, and a sense of unease. I'm going to keep you alive. He's got the basket if you've got the lotion. I'm sorry, but no one is looking for you. Dude, you could be phrasing all of this better, but he's just making everything that much more awkward. He doesn't seem all bad. He does give her the key to the chains. Immediately, she starts sharpening a crutch into a weapon, and she waits, and waits. But Howard doesn't come back until she starts a small fire. But Howard bursts in and he sedates her. When she wakes up again, Howard finally gives her an explanation. I get he wanted to lead up to this slowly to get her up to speed, but don't be so sinister, man. Howard says there's been an attack, and he rescued Michelle from her car and took her down here to save her. Also, she can't leave. The air outside's been poisoned. Attacked by whom? Could be Russians. Could be aliens. Anyone not stopped by a wall. And there's nobody left out there. So start repopulating. There are noises up above, but we still don't know if it's Red Dawn or Independence Day up there. Her door is finally unlocked, so she checks out the rest of the bunker. She meets Emmett, played by John Gallagher Jr., and he's like, Oh, thank God, a woman. The bunker is actually kind of nice. There's a fish tank, movies, books, music, but one bathroom. Howard shows Michelle the front door. It looks okay outside, except for two pigs turning into sausage on their own. She also sees a familiar truck, one that looks exactly like the one that ran her off the road. Now she's suspicious. Emmett's here because he helped Howard build the place, and when the shit hit the fan, he forced his way into Howard's heart. She tells him she recognized the truck as the one who put her here. You know, it could have easily have been him driving. Why are you telling anyone? They have awkward dinners. Howard's a little aged out of the group, you know what I'm saying? You have two young adults and the coach from Revenge of the Nerds. There's a definite age difference, so of course, there's gonna be clicks. And Howard just blows up. What exactly do you think you're doing? I guess he feels left out. Red flags. But Michelle uses the distraction to steal his keys. And then she clocks Howard with a bottle and makes a break for it. She makes it to the front door and right up to the airlock door, but Howard's screaming for her to not go out there because the air is poison. There's a car! She's about to open it, but a woman appears at the window. Oh God, thank God. She's bleeding from everywhere, choking, begging to be let in. Of course, they can't let her in. One toilet, remember? God, open the door, you bitch! Oh, you're gonna be like that, huh? So the dungeon isn't so bad, is it? Howard admits he was the guy who ran her off the road, but it was an accident. He was trying to get home before the attack, and he didn't mean to knock her off the road. So he felt responsible and kind of sort of kidnapped her and for her own good. It sounded better when he said it. But he's sorry, and it seems sincere. So they're cool now. She stitches up the gaping head wound she gave him. You know, a real man would have used staples and duct tape. He had a daughter, once, but she died. Then Roseanne lost her show. It was a rough few years. 
So bunker life is looking pretty good now. Puzzles, music, TV. If they only had DoorDash, this would be like 2020 all over again. This is a fake movie, not a documentary about Spirit Airlines. Okay. Oh boy. That's bad. There is a problem with the ventilation system. If we can't get it back on, we're going to run out of breathable air fast. So the door to the control room is blocked and they can't reach it to fix it. The only one small enough to get to it is Michelle. So she has to climb, you know, die hard her way through the ducts into the control room. Where she fixes the problem pretty easily without running into any velociraptors. And then she notices another way out, a locked hatch with a skylight. Seems kind of weird to have in an impenetrable bunker and an impenetrable in an impenetrable bunker impenetrable 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 kind of seems weird to have this in an impenetrable bunker nailed it clear skies overhead no melting ladies looks okay right except somebody scratched help into the glass she also finds an earring that's definitely not howard's color the earring seems to have belonged to this girl who isn't Howard's daughter after all, but a girl who went missing two years ago. Turns out Howard's wife and daughter left him. What a shock, he seems so stable. They decide to go outside, but poison, so they start making a hazmat suit from an old shower curtain and other trash using stolen tools. Not soon enough, Howard's becoming more and more unhinged. I know what you're doing, I see what you're doing. Howard decides to show the kids his cool barrel of acid. Howard had found the missing tools and knows they're up to something. Emmett takes all the blame. I'm sorry. So Howard shoots him. <laughs> now they can be a family of two. Howard is wanting Michelle to kind of be of a surrogate daughter. Play your cards right, you can be comfortable. So Michelle finishes the suit, which she is terrible at hiding. Get up. Why? <laughs> <laughs> She fights him off, spills acid everywhere, which starts a fire. She grabs her suit and heads out. Yabba dabba don't. She makes it back into the control room and leaves Howard in the burning bunker. She puts on the suit and busts the hell out of there. And she finally makes it outside. She accidentally tears a hole in her suit, so she patches it up real fast with duct tape but she gets the sense the air is okay after all. Birds are flying overhead, which is a good sign. So she removes her mask. So maybe this whole time, Howard was some crazy lunatic who kidnapped girls and kept them prisoner. Maybe this whole thing was made up. Except, except she sees a spaceship flying over a nearby field. Come on. The bunker explodes and that gets the attention of the spaceship. So she hides in the barn and the ship released creatures that are hunting her now, which kind of look like dogs with assholes for faces. She runs outside, and a spaceship appears spewing poisonous gas. So Howard wasn't full of shit after all. What a twist. But no match for her homemade gas mask, which, you know, pretty good engineering there. She hides in Howard's pickup, but the alien ship has tentacles that pick up the truck, and it looks like it's about to eat the entire truck with her in it. She finds this bottle of booze, she fashions it into a Molotov cocktail, and throws it into the mouth of the ship. Yeah, fuck you too! Then the alien ship explodes, it drops a truck, and Michelle's fine. She takes the melting lady's car and drives away. We finally learn the address of the place. 10 Cloverfield Lane. Everyone groan with me. One, two, three. Oh. Baton Rouge is safety. Houston has people who are fighting back. Character development, she's off to make a difference. Good luck getting past that spaceship hidden in the clouds. And that was 10 Cloverfield Lane. See what I mean? Nothing to do with Cloverfield. There are some references, minor connections that add nothing. If Slusho is enough to connect these movies, the slush show makes, thank you. then Star Trek is also a Cloverfield movie. That said, I do kind of like this movie. The small cast give great performances. John Goodman is terrific as both Kind Howard and Dark Howard. I just love John Goodman. Still, the finest live-action portrayal of Fred Flintstone. He effectively keeps the audience guessing about his true nature. You think he's bad, but maybe he's not all bad. Mary Elizabeth Winstead is a resourceful and determined protagonist. John Gallagher is our everyman. This worked as a tight thriller with a bit of mystery. Was Howard telling the truth? Was there really an attack? The claustrophobic setting, the mysterious sounds up above, 
really drove the tension and paranoid atmosphere. Imagine the twist if Michelle broke out and it was all a fantasy. What if she was safer in the bunker after all? All of these possibilities were in the air. That is, unless you watched the trailer with this shot. Kind of spoils the twist, right? For someone who loved mystery boxes, JJ sure let it out of the bag. I get the impression the filmmakers didn't have as much faith in this movie unless they enticed him with shots of aliens and named after a popular movie implying a true sequel. I thought, for the most part, this movie would have been so much better without the Cloverfield connection. The movie was initially developed as a standalone thriller called The Cellar, and was later adapted into the Cloverfield universe. It still had stretch marks where they shoehorned in the references. It starts out feeling like a classic Twilight Zone episode, and then it turns into a typical Hollywood alien invasion movie. The aliens proving Howard right would have been a decent twist, lesser of two evils, but the trailer, again, spoiled the twist. It is a slow build. The tension ramps up nicely, 10 Cloverfield Lane is a gripping thriller that could stand on its own. Just forget the Cloverfield franchise. It delivers strong performances, a taut atmosphere, and compelling narrative that unfortunately slips at the very end. 10 Cloverfield Lane is 3.5 Bs. For fans of psychological thrillers, it's worth a watch. And frankly, I found the attempted connections to Cloverfield kind of insulting. Not everything needs to be a franchise, guys. Oh well, at least I'm not doing the next one. Or am I? Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment the bell. You know the usual YouTube stuff. This is The Newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles.